then sometimes you would put those nothing, nothing is nothing is nothing is nothing is nothing, 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 nothing. and nothing they'd be looking at us like this like through slits of his eyes at this point i was insisting to the psychiatrist that it couldn't be only ocd so then the psychiatrist said that perhaps what we're looking at is tourette's Tourette's syndrome is a neurological disorder characterized by involuntary physical and verbal tics. The disease, which is lifelong once it sets in, first strikes patients in childhood or adolescence. And he said that we would have to add a different medication. I went online, I reviewed all the behaviors that the literature said were consistent with a diagnosis of Tourette's, and it seemed that Sammy was, in fact, doing pretty much everything that they described. But as spring turns into summer, Sammy's disturbing behaviors take over his life completely. He wouldn't hold a conversation. He wouldn't sleep. He wouldn't eat. He stopped walking entirely. All he did was hop. He had complex motor tics where he would hold his ears and grunt and jump and gasp for breath all at the same time. It was the most horrible thing that I could imagine. I had completely lost my child. Despite her mounting anguish, Beth continues trying to communicate with Sammy. But nothing could have prepared her for the wrenching moment that finally brings everything to a head. Sammy came downstairs. He wouldn't talk to me. He just handed me this note that I unfolded, and he had written the word HELP in all capital letters. I didn't think anyone would be able to help me, but I wrote HELP anyway. It was the only thing I could do. I called my mother. I was sobbing. I said, I'm going to have to find him a placement where he can live because I cannot help him. We hung up the phone. Within two minutes, the phone rang again. My mom said, you need to talk to this woman who works with me. I think she can help you. As a result of that conversation, I took Sammy to see Dr. Catherine Nicolaitis in New Jersey. I saw Sammy in August of 2003. I got a complete history from Beth. His symptoms were at a crisis level. Most significantly, Dr. Nicolaitis is intrigued by one clear fact of his case. Sammy hasn't responded to any of the medications he's been taking. She tried to give him a physical exam, but he really wasn't able to tolerate much touching. I had some thoughts in terms of a diagnosis. We needed to do some blood work. They probably ran 10 different tests. I was scared to death. I believed in my heart that we were going to find the answer. The results of the blood work came back in 24 hours. He was producing antibodies to a specific bacteria, Streptococcus. And once we had the elevated blood results, that confirmed for us the diagnosis of PANDAS. PANDAS, or Pediatric Autoimmune Neuropsychiatric Disorder Associated with Strep, is a rare autoimmune disorder in which antibodies attack the brain. In a healthy child, when streptococcus bacteria infect the body, the immune system produces antibodies that target and destroy the strep. But in children like Sammy, for some unknown reason, the antibodies brutally assault the brain, causing OCD and Tourette's-like symptoms. We don't know why the antibodies do this. The antibodies think that it's attacking the strep, but it's actually attacking neurons in the brain, which are responsible for motor movement. Nothing is nothing. The is manifestations nothing, 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 nothing. are tick-like manifestations and obsessive compulsive symptoms. Sammy never had a sore throat. Some people are asymptomatic for strep. Amazingly, the irrational fears, the unnatural behaviors, and even the outlandish visions were all the direct result of one simple thing, 
strep antibodies wreaking havoc on his brain. And it's now clear why the medicine he was taking had no effect. Serotonin reuptake inhibitors are used to treat obsessive compulsive symptoms, not strep. Any impact they might have had was counteracted by the strep antibodies that were continually bombarding his brain. In fact, if Sammy hadn't been diagnosed when he was, his bizarre behaviors would have continued to multiply and possibly caused irreversible damage. There is a sentiment that if you do not interfere early enough that there can be excessive damage to the brain. The scariest thing is that I could have totally lost my son to something as simple as a strep infection. The good news is that PANDAS is treatable. While drugs target the underlying strep, therapy can help Sammy unlearn his compulsive behaviors. We introduced a mood stabilizer as well as antibiotic therapy so that you are not only aiming your treatment at strep, but that you are also using traditional treatments that address obsessive compulsive behavior or tics. But unfortunately, Dr. Nicolaitis can't give Beth any guarantees about whether Sammy will ever be his old self again. Sammy had the worst case of obsessive compulsive symptoms I had ever seen. There's no way to predict whether he would be able to return to school. I did not think I was going to get better. I thought I was going to have those behaviors for life. Beth Maloney has just learned that her son Sammy has pandas, an extremely rare disease that attacks the brain. For over a year, it's made his life a living nightmare, ruled by bizarre obsessions. Now, the 13-year-old is on antibiotics that should help rein in his strange behavior, but he may never fully recover. I was worried about whether there might have been permanent brain damage. I wanted to finally have Sammy back. The next several days are almost unbearable as Beth waits to see some sign of improvement. I began to notice differences immediately. When I first started to not do behaviors, it was kind of a wonderful feeling. At the time, and as aggressively as we treated Sammy, we were able to halt this process so that there was not significant damage. Gradually, over the winter, Sammy's behaviors disappear altogether, and eventually, he no longer needs treatment. He spent the next six months making up all of the sixth and seventh grade curriculum so that he returned to eighth grade with his classmates right on time. I don't really feel any sort of OCD uh, or Tourette's type behaviors or compulsions anymore. While Sammy is thrilled to be back to his old self, he must now face an undeniable truth. He will always be susceptible to the condition. If he were to begin to experience behaviors, he would know these are his symptoms of a strep infection. He needs to go on antibiotics for a couple of weeks in the same way that another person would go on for a sore throat. Beth is grateful that Sammy survived the ordeal unscathed. And now she can't help but wonder why his psychologist and psychiatrist failed to recognize the seemingly obvious clues to her son's condition. How could it never cross their mind that the root cause of his disorder could be an infection. PANDAS is controversial because PANDAS has only uh, been recognized in the last 20 years or so. I think there may be undiagnosed cases because traditionally we look for strep by a throat infection, not by a presentation of symptoms of OCD and tics. Today, Sammy is 20 and living a full and completely normal life. Sammy is dynamite. He had a successful year as a freshman in one of the top computer science schools in the country. I'm incredibly grateful to my mom for never really giving up and just always doing what she could to help me get better. 
if it wasn't for her relentless pursuit of some way to help me, then I would still be just as sick, probably worse, actually. So she's really just saved me from all that, and I'm incredibly grateful. I don't know what I would have done if I hadn't gotten that diagnosis. I would say to any parent whose child has been given a diagnosis of obsessive compulsive disorder or Tourette syndrome, that they simply insist that strep be eliminated as an underlying cause prior to placing that child on any kind of psychotropic medication. Beth was very instrumental in Sammy getting the appropriate treatment for his illness. She was very methodical and she was relentless in getting the right help for her son. I hope Dr. Nicoletis understands how grateful I am to her. She really saved my life. Dr. Nicolaitis has been a lifesaver for my child and for my entire family, and we are indebted to her for the rest of our lives. I think that the truly great doctors are open to possibilities, and those doctors understand that there is a point in time when science intersects art, and that medicine is an art, and overlooking possibilities is something that anyone can do, but only the great people are willing to take a step back and say, well, maybe this could be it. I don't really look back at how I felt then or what I did back then. I just look forward. I'm just happy to be where I am. While there was no denying that Beth Maloney's son was literally losing his mind, Doctor after doctor dismissed Linda Fox's disfiguring disease, even when it threatened to kill her. In the fall of 2006, 42-year-old high school teacher Linda Fox and her husband Barry were celebrating almost 20 years together, and just as much in love as when they first met. She's a, a wonderful person, and my greatest joy. It was love at first sight. Barry was teaching math and I was teaching French. He's my best friend. I couldn't ask for a better life. They have a great relationship. They're just a very active, happy couple. We decided not to have children because we already have Eric, who's a wonderful stepson and son to Barry. Then we have many friends and many children in our lives. And in their suburban town of Perrysburg, Ohio, Linda was known for her inexhaustible energy. I never had any health issues at all. I rarely was sick. I had recently become a runner and finished my black belt degree in karate. And as Thanksgiving approaches that year, Linda is especially busy. Little does she know that her life is about to spin out of control. One morning I woke up and both eyes were hurting. It felt like someone had taken hot peppers and rubbed them in both eyes. I looked in the mirror I've got bright red stinging blisters on both eyelids. So I made an appointment and went in to see an eye doctor. And he looked very carefully at my eyes and he said there's something called blepharitis. Blepharitis is an inflammation of the eyelids caused by abnormalities in the oil glands. While the condition often recurs for unknown reasons, it can be treated. The doctor gave me a prescription for a cream to put on my eye. I used the ointment on my eyelids for about a week, and my eyelids were fine. I thought I was just going to have to deal with it the best I could. And sure enough, it kept coming and going. It was as if somebody had punched me in the eye. I attempted to wear sunglasses to sort of hide. But over the next two months, Linda is horrified to see that the strange inflammation is beginning to spread. Not just my eyelids were swollen and red, my whole face was swollen. My face was really hot. I felt like I'd been exposed to the sun for way too long. I 